Hi guys, it's me, Marcy. Hello. And it's three o'clock on Thursdays, so Thursdays at three. And thanks for joining me today. Today, we're gonna melt some glass. I know it's a big surprise, isn't it? So how are you doing? It's getting a little old, isn't it? Not the melting glass, but the rest of it. But anyhow, chin up, put that steel in your backbone. We can do this and let's have some fun. So when you're watching, if you wouldn't mind just saying hi so I know who's watching and uh, where you're from, that would be cool also. And I think today, seeing that I'm still, I've got a show going on in Artisan's Open Market till about 9.30 tonight Eastern time. So if you're around, you're welcome. I've got some bears there and all kinds of things. Um, pop by over there. So I'll be there right after I finish with this again. So today I thought we would make a rose because I have a custom order to make a simple red rose. And you know what? I haven't really used Sangre before. I had this other red that I had been using for a long time. So today you get to watch me try out Sangre and make a simple red open rose for one of my customers. I am going to switch this around, do the little switcheroo thing and hook us in. And we're gonna have to work fast because remember last time it got too hot. So if it gets too hot again, I will make a second video like I did last time. And don't forget, you can find this on my personal page. Just go to photos, albums, videos, those three things, and you got it. So you can find all my videos there. And I have a YouTube channel. It's under Marcy Lamberson. I know that's a surprise, isn't it? So you can go there and see some videos there that I've done for the beginners group. And let's see what else. I think that's good enough. So let's get started. We're on a slightly different angle. I'm kind of um, switching things around just a tiny bit. And that's it. Okay, we're gonna switch and then we're gonna make a quick rose and cross your fingers for me because this is the first time I've been doing it with this glass. So if I screw up, <laughs> which is possible, just kind of cut me some slack, okay? or send me some chocolate. I could use that too. Okay, here we go. Thanks. So let's see. Here we go. This is the glass I've always used, this red transparent. And we're not going to use it this time, but see how it's a striking glass and you get that clear? When I work with transparents that strike like that, in sculpture, sometimes it's a little bit harder because of the way that I need to keep some things hot and some things cool. So I'm trying this Sangre out by Creation is Messy, and I do love their glass, and I'm looking forward to trying it out. And we're going to make a red kind of rose-like flower. And I've switched this phone so that it's a little bit different, and I hope that it's going to record okay. Okay, so there's my marver. I can see that you can see that in the photo and you can see the rest of my messy table also. Okay, let's do this. So I don't need a whole lot of tools and I hope you can hear me okay. Don't forget to say hi to me. Okay, so here we go. I usually use just a couple of tools for these and I have my trusty torch I use tungsten tweezers sometimes I've got some mashers that give me a curve I can't remember where I got these see how these are wider than the concave convex ones see the difference in the width if anybody knows where I got these please speak up and let everybody else know because I honestly can't remember and we're going to take a 330 second mandrel. How about if we do that? We're going to make a base bead with some sangre. And you're all going to cross your fingers for me that this works out, right? Everybody be positive. So I've been busy with my Artisans Open Market show and I've gone to only one show a month, which is different for me. I've been doing two online shows, so it's um, more 
speeds and more effort, I guess, for once a month instead. And it's still lots of fun. I'm going to finish up tonight, but boy, at the end of those, I'm tired. The only problem is we can't really go out to dinner or do something fun afterwards because we're all kind of stuck inside. So we're going to make a base bead and then we're going to flatten it a bit and then we're going to build the petals off of it. And I do it in kind of a funny order and I'll explain as I go. But I want a nice pad that I can put the petals on. And I want it kind of good size, and it doesn't have to be exactly round. I just need some size to it, so depending upon the size of the open flower that I'm doing. So we're just adding a little bit more here. And so far so good. I like this glass, the sangre. I have heard people say how much they liked it before. And I thought, well, it's time. Oops. That happens with lots of glass, though. And at first, I, I think maybe next week, let's do something. What do you say? Some sculpture in silver glass? I think we're done with flowers after this. But how about if we do that? Let's see. I want a marber. This is my Cote marber that I have. I think you guys found it. Malcolm Spawn might have it, perhaps. Um, that I use for my marbling. And we don't need anything perfect. I just like to kind of keep it all in line a little bit. Move that out of the way. So, guys seen any good TV shows or movies recently? I haven't watched much TV. I was busy making stuff for the show. And I don't watch TV when I do that because then I get distracted. And I don't listen to music when I do it either because then I want to sing along and I forget what I'm doing. So let's go with something close to this size. And we're going to mash it. We don't need to make it too flat. We can make it however you want. What I'd like to do is keep a little bit of height. And the reason why I do this is so that those bottom petals will not hit right onto the mandrel. So I give it a little smush. And I also like having the back side, um, this isn't gonna be a huge one, I like having the back side flat so that when you're wearing it, you can't see what I'm doing, so when you're wearing it, <laughs> that's funny, um, it seems to lay a little bit flatter also. So what I do is I go around and I start with a couple, I do the outside petals first. And I like to make them big-ish and towards the edge so I've got room to add more petals afterwards. And I just make a little line like this. See how I did that? I hope you can see that. And while that's cooling a little bit, we go and heat the back and we're gonna do some more. We want these to be kind of good size. Let's go. We'll, go, we'll try uh, probably even more than that. We're going to make them big, huh? Okay, so that I think was four. Did you count those while I did that? I'm not sure. And we're going to keep the bead warm, and then I'm going to smoosh it. And I'm pulling it down at the same time didn't go too far down, but we know how to fix that, don't we? We're going to heat up the glass, because once you use the metal on it, you want to um, heat it back up again. Let's just pull it out with the tungstens, huh? My buddies. And at this same time, you can add a little movement to it as well. Okay, so warm it up. You know, red is so weird to work in, because it just... You can't really see what's going on as well. It's dark, it's kind of hard to tell, and when you open the kiln the next day, sometimes you have some surprises. Okay, let's add another big petal. Usually I have them overlap, but we can let these go out and then we can overlap on top of them. So we're gonna add a couple layers again. Two. Three, count along 
with me. It's like Sesame Street. Whoa, one, two, three. Okay. So I get a little goofy the longer I do this stuff, and I, I apologize now because who knows what's going to come out of my mouth. Um, another thing to remember, when you're doing the sculptural glass, you want to be sure not to just hold your mandrel like this all the time. I know when we make traditional beads, that's what we do. But in sculpture, you need to move it around to get all the parts warm and keep them warm to the temperature that you want them. And see how that glow happens each time I pop that in the flame? That means that that petal is warm enough. And I thinned it out quite a bit. I'm not sure whether you can see how thin that is. I keep them thick enough that I don't feel like they're too fragile. Okay. Ooh, that glass is stiff. Not as mushy as I'm used to. Okay, so we did a little smush there. Let's pull that around. I like being the boss of the glass. That's one thing. People say, oh, the glass wants to do something. Uh -uh. No, you are the glass bosses of the glass, not the glass boss of you. You choose what you want it to do, and then you force it into submission. Or uh, maybe you're like a glass dominatrix, or whatever you call that stuff. See how I can just turn that a little bit? You can make your petals do all kinds of fun things when you use your tungsten tweezers. Okay, so there we go. Well, I guess we better add a few more petals because two petals isn't going to do it. Although that's probably how I would grow flowers. I'm not so good at that stuff. Let's add some more, huh? Now this is getting a little uneven. It's not flat, so you can just heat it up and pop it back down on your mandrel every so often. On your marker, I mean, not on your mandrel. It better stay on your mandrel. Oh, speaking of mandrels, I am using Dip and Go Blue Sludge, or whatever that's called, because it holds like concrete, and I like that in a bead release. Here we go. So we're doing petal number three, keeping everything warm as we go. I see a little bit of glow every time I turn this around and I'm watching. Sometimes when we're making beads, we get to thinking about other things and we aren't really conscious of what we're doing. I think it's a really good idea to be conscious of what you're doing. So we added a little bit more. Let's mush again. You don't need to use anything curved, you know. You can do it all on your own with tweezers and mashers and whatever you want. Because obviously that did not do exactly what I wanted. Oh, and I need to show you something else that I use sometimes because it's kind of fun. You know how, do you like to go to stores and find weird things that turn into tools? Anybody like to do that? Go ahead, tell me what you found, because sometimes those are some of the best tools. And I'll show you something that I found that I thought was kind of cool. So let's get this pedal down a little bit, and we'll curve it up a tiny bit too. Cool. So now we've got some bottom petals, and we're going to have to add some interior ones. But first, I'm going to show you something that I found, because I'm thinking about it right now, and I got it for petals and things like that. And I've never used them for their real use, but I'm going to show you. I found them on Amazon. I'm reaching for them right now. That's what you can see. And these are pie crust crimpers. Can you see those? That I found on Amazon. But look at the shapes that you can get. And they all come in a pack, so you want to get the big pack of them. But look at all the different things you have to play with. It's like instant fun. Look, you can get some bees there. These work really well for petals also. See that nice curve? I think you can see that. Anyhow, so those stay up. I don't, honestly, I don't use them very often, but once in a while I use them and, and they're really kind of fun to use. They're more like a novelty tool, but what the heck, you know. Sometimes novelty tools are fun too. Okay, that's back. Then I do the next row, as long as I can keep them spread out far enough. And then we do the inside. So we're going to do another row of petal. 
ourselves, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did before. And we're going to stagger it because you don't want them matching up with the other ones. And that's why some of mine are different sizes and shapes. I like variety in a flower. Okay, so we're going to heat up everything, make sure that we got some nice warmth in there. We're going to go right across the top. We're going to add a little bit more. And let's give it a smush. First, we're going to heat up everything else. Reach in there, give it a little heat, and then we're going to pull it back out again. And remember, you get to choose where you want those petals to go. Isn't that pretty? Let's warm everything up in between. You don't want to mess around with it too much at least because you know what's going to happen? Yeah. Something else is going to get cold and then you're going to get really sad. So keep it warm and, and move kind of quickly at it. Let's get a little more hot. We'll do another kettle. We're going to go right across here. See how I just kind of pushed it in there? We'll grab it. If you can't grab it with something like this, you can take your tweezers and grab it from there. I'm reaching right in and pulling it out. We're going to have to get the tweezers in there too. And we're just pulling the glass out where we want it. Because remember, you're the boss of the glass. It's not the boss of you. Just pull it where you want it to go. But sometimes I sound like Bob Ross when I do that, don't I? <sighs> Career goal. And I'm just turning it, moving it, and adding a little bit of movement into the petals. And we're reheating everything because, by golly, we have to. Now we've got some room right here to add the next one. And we're going to heat it up. Sometimes it's hard to reach in there and grab the glass and do what you want with it. So if you leave a smaller footprint and build it up, you can do that. Right now I'm kind of plopping it in. But if I was being really meticulous about it, which <clears throat> I'm not always the most meticulous person, I would do a thin line and build up on the thin line here. I'll show you. Because I know some of you are like that who are watching. So I'll show you another way of doing it. Now it kind of looks like a black flower, doesn't it? And we're keeping it nice and toasty. I let this cool a little bit, so I'm just heating up the part that I want to lay down. See how I'm laying down just a thinner line instead of a thick blob like I did on the other ones? And I'm just going to keep going over it, that line. We can go thicker as we go up. Don't forget to keep everything warm. Keep building, building. Looks like this is going to use more than a single rod of glass. How cool is that? Okay, can we reach in there with this? Maybe. Yeah, we got a little bit. We're going to have to use the tweezers again. First, we're going to heat everything up. And now we're going to take it and move it around to whatever looks good to you. And most of you probably know more about flowers than I do. If you follow my page, you'll see that I am totally inept with growing things. So if you are a natural person who's good at this stuff, you can ace it. Okay, so it's getting kind of cute. What we're going to do is, because this is small, I'm going to grab another rod of glass and let's see if there's a finish one. Not finish, finish. See me waving that around. It wasn't on purpose. Let's keep it warm. And I'll show you what I do in the center. Because we want it to be full. And we want it to look like there are some petals in there. So 
So I'm heating up some glass that I'm going to put in the center. I'm going to heat up the center where I'm going to put it, but not so hot that I lose the shape of any of my petals. See the amount of glow I have on them? And I'm going to get this nice and warm, and I'm going to drop it right in the center. Boom, right in the center, and then I'm going to pull up a little bit. Ha! Got it. And while that's cooling a little bit, I'm going to heat up the rest of the bead. Oh, that's going to be pretty. And I think that we want to shape it a little bit. Let's find something tiny to shape it with. I don't know whether this will work. Just making it a little bit pointier. And I think maybe a razor we might be able to get in there but we got to keep it warm before we start mucking around with it because boy I like to muck. Usually what I do is I just take my tweezers. I'll show you what I normally do. We'll see whether that works. If not we'll muck a little more. What I usually do is get it nice and juicy warm and then I squeeze with my tweezers and twist a little bit. Yep that worked just fine. So I dug in while it was nice and warm, and I pushed in, and I just turned. Did you see that? So we got the inside of the rose without having to muck too much. My kind of rose. And now the last that we're going to do is we're just going to move any petals around if we want to make them larger. We're going to heat from the back, get them nice and soft, and pull them. Remember... You're in charge of the class. It's not in charge of you. You make it go where you want it to go. And it got a little thin there and small. So watch this trick. We'll just add a little bit more to it. Petal's not big enough. Okay. We'll just add a little more. So I'm getting the rod nice and hot. I'm keeping it warm where I'm going to add the glass. And I see that little line right there. And I just add a little bit more on top of it. And while that's cooling a tiny bit, I'm heating up the rest of it. And I'll go back to this and I can take my tweezers and do whatever I want with it. Oh yeah, that's bigger now. So that, my friends, is a rose, is a rose, is a rose. And thank you for joining me today. I'll be back next week. And what do you think? Silver glass and sculpture? I think that'd be fun. I just got some new double helix and I haven't tried it out yet. So from Marcy Lamberson, thanks for joining me. Feel free to share this on your pages or somewhere else. Who knows? Bye. See you next Thursday. Take care. Oh, and don't forget to tell me that you saw this.